Welcome back to the channel, folks. I'm your host, Fog. Thank you for joining another episode here on Battle Gamers. And today, we're taking a look at another game from an indie developer on Steam. This is 1CC Games. They have graciously provided a code for Space Moth Lunar Edition. So Space Moth is a vertical shoot 'em up bullet hell. Right? Like that's how it ex is explained, and that's pretty much the case in, in the game itself. If you've ever played a bullet hell, lots of bullets, that's the whole idea. And you've just got to navigate your way through to be able to get through each stage, right? Space Moth Lunar Edition, there's five stages. This is off of the back of a game that came out. So this came out November 18th, 2021. This is off of the back of a game that they had made about five years earlier, which was Space Moth. DX. They also have a very um, interesting side-scrolling shooter, which hopefully we'll get a chance to check that one out as well. I'm not 100% sure though. We're gonna see if we can get a key for it, check it out, and we could we could even show it on here because I kind of waited for the Legends Ultimate Mini to show up before kind of going through this game. Now this game plays obviously in a vertical orientation. This would work very well if you've got the uh, ALP, which I've got sitting in front of me right here, I'm tapping on it, uh, with the arcade controller. Same idea with that screen, you know, you hook it up, either have an OTG PC connected to your machine or use the Legends Link app. Here we're using the Legends Link to the uh, Legends Ultimate Mini. So you get kind of that, that really nice, you know, arcade controller feel on this shooter. We'll go through, we'll kind of look at the game. We're also recording uh, some of the gameplay footage as well, so we can get a chance to see what that looks like direct feed, but we'll show some of it on here and I'll kind of put it over where I'm sitting so you can see a better view because it's going to be, you know, in the uh, vertical orientation. But let's jump in, take a look at in this version in the new Space Moth um, Lunar Edition, you actually have two different ships you can choose. You can choose the, the space moth itself, <laughs> moths with lasers, and that has, you know, variable degree from a rapid wide shot. I mean, almost if you sit at the bottom, you can shoot all the way from screen edge to screen edge uh, with that wide shot. And you also have a very powerful laser that gives you a more narrow beam, but definitely much more damage. And then you've got the Hawk DX1, that one, it has a different pattern, right? Like you have these two side ships and they move from either the left or the right. So they don't take up that wide like V going up the top of the screen. They're more like either more on the left, more on the right. So it's definitely a different difficulty level when you're playing with the Hawk DX1 uh, ship. So Space Moth itself, you can see here we're playing on the network. Right now, um, one of these things I've talked about before is the Legends Ultimate tries to, or any of the Legends devices, sorry, not just the Ultimate Mini, but any of the Legends devices on the ecosystem that use the Legends Link app tries to run a pretty, pretty um, self-sufficient system, right? Being able to determine what's the best resolution for the network bandwidth and everything, or what's the best quality. So right now we're set on auto. I'm gonna turn that on to high. Now we are networked on this. I know when I originally talked about this, I had it on Wi-Fi. I've actually networked the machine, so it's actually connected to the network or the ethernet. And it, it plays, you know, obviously it has a, um, a better picture when it's on there on high, no hiccups, no nothing. I didn't have it really on the 5G either, but I just like, since I'm using this mainly as a Steam machine connected to it, you know, so I can jump back and forth between the games that are on the machine and CoinOps X and then a Steam, 
this is the the best way is to have it you know directly wired into the network so we'll jump in again now that we're playing we don't get any of the digitized um, background or anything like that it's it's as good as if it was connected to the tv you can see you know bullet hell lots of stuff on the screen i'm not probably the most um uh, aficionado of these but I, I do tend to enjoy them they are some of my favorite types of uh, game mechanics and in this one you definitely have a totally different design for scoring that I've seen in the past now there's always some trick to you know um, the bullet hell type games we can talk about another one later on called Ikaruga that more people are probably uh, familiar with in that sense of a bullet hell it has a unique um, mechanic to it as well but you can see here we have a that super powerful laser that can take out enemies really fast but it's definitely like more defined in where it aims it's not as wide as our rapid shot which can literally go and cover all the sides of the screen from side to side in this so lots of dying you're gonna die constantly and it will we'll show a little bit further into the game um, in some of the, the the direct feed but here you also have practice you also have a how to play how to play is really good to be able to read through they actually give you an achievement for reading through it <laughs> which was kind of funny you also have different challenges so you can do different feats of skill you have leaderboards you know obviously local leaderboards for myself here this is going to be only local as far as I can tell. Controls, you can adjust between a keyboard and a, a gamepad. Obviously, we're using a gamepad here. You have your options for your different resolutions, your quality, scan lines if you want them, all of that stuff. You can even erase the data. But the game itself, very fun game as you go through, uh, like I said, five stages. We'll go through and show kind of all of the stuff right now. So you have... As I said, the wide shot, you have the laser, more defined, kind of more powerful. You can see there's a circle building up around me. I can use that to my advantage when lots of bullets are coming at me. I can like basically capture the bullets or the, the soul of, of the enemies, their, their bullets. And then you also have a bomb that takes all the bullets on the screen and shoots them back towards the enemy while making you invincible. So by using the combination of all of these, what looks pretty daunting in the beginning when you're playing it or when you first turn it on, within like a half hour of learning how to use all the different functions, you can get through levels without ever being touched. Um, you know, just the level of challenge that um, you're willing to be able to take on is far more because you, you understand more of how the game plays and uh, overall it's a great experience the hitbox is fairly small on the moth you can kind of see the little and it probably is going to be better seen in the direct feed but you can see there's like a little dot on the moth right on its back that's your hitbox essentially and that's where you know technical term hitbox i guess but that's where a bullet can you know hit you directly and you'll die if it just skims past goes through the wing doesn't bother you one thing here uh, i have noticed is that if you want to save your high score you can only do that on the first run that you do you do get continues you get three continues i believe it is but your high score only counts if you choose no on the first one and then you can you know lock in your high score in terms of scoring itself there are some different ways to score like you can take enemies out and then you can hit them with the laser right at the last second and get more points you can see i'm taking them down and i hit them with the laser and i actually get more points than i normally would it's harder to do when you're not concentrating <laughs> right now i'm pretty much just playing uh, or pretty much just talking and, and not really playing but you can see if I'm just shooting with the rapid laser I'm not getting that bonus 500 if I hit him with a heavy laser after I've shot him with the rapid then I do get that there's also scoring at the end as I said once you collect the souls of the bullets or whatever they are um, you'll get more points there at the end that are applied towards a bonus and then like I said the 
the more you can get through the game, you get a higher, without dying, you get a higher uh, multiplier. Okay, so now you've seen some of the gameplay. It gives you a good idea of what the actual um, later levels look like. Kind of the scoring, you know, the, the, the dynamic system to scoring. Um, you can really start to build up some pretty high scores if you're doing it the correct way. Like if you're just going through and playing the game, just shooting with one gun and like dodging bullets, you're not going to get really as high of a score as if you start to compound some of those attacks and your your varying degrees of soul collecting through the or bullet collecting, soul collecting, whatever they want to call it, and then your combinations of bombs and things of that nature. So, looking back, kind of where the games are, right? Let's let's talk about where this game is. So this game is probably somewhere in the realm, and this is based on Steam Spy data, which pulls data. We've talked about this in the past. I'm a I'm a data kind of person in terms of how well games do because of you know what I do. Um, but if we're looking at it, it's done probably somewhere between like five and six thousand on Steam, which you know the game is marked at seven ninety nine, a really good price point to come out at. The original game was four ninety nine. Um, I believe that's the full price it's always been at. I don't think it started any higher. I think it was $4.99 when it launched for the original Space Moth DX. And that game probably did somewhere around the 26 to 30,000, maybe 28,000, somewhere in their range at $4.99. So fairly decent <clears throat> out of the gate, right? In general, I mean, you know, you're, you're probably looking at somewhere less than, oh, hundred and forty thousand hundred and thirty thousand probably a hundred thousand dollars after after steam's cut um currently right now though around eight dollars sitting at around you know we'll, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say six thousand right to to say the highest number you know you're looking at about forty forty eight thousand something like that just shy of fifty and then you take about thirty percent off of that for steam share you know you're coming in at what are we looking at um Oh, what about fourteen, fifteen thousand, something like that off? It's my math right there. Carry the one somewhere in there, probably around thirty-five thousand dollars, something like that is what they're they're looking at in terms of you know thirty-five to forty somewhere in there uh, of of revenue off of their title that they've got so far, which obviously is is a good start. It's about halfway through. It's only been about a month. A little bit around a month that they're out there and definitely comparison to something like Ikaruga um, Ikaruga not the exact same game right definitely a different style of game um, much more lineage I think on Steam it's been on there since 2014 something like that but that game's got around 144,000 somewhere in there in terms of uh, sales and I, I believe Ikaruga if I look it up the pricing doesn't change too much on there. The machine went to sleep. Uh, the pricing doesn't change too much on it. I think it's somewhere in the realm of $10, something like that, $9.99, 10 bucks, something like that. And it's obviously had sales, things like that, over that time. So you really can't say that it's been that for the whole time, but you know that's if it's a 10, it's a little over a million. Um, almost a million five, something like that. Uh, if you're if you're saying that, well, they probably maybe average their price at about $5. I don't know if that's the case, depending upon how many sales that they've done um, over those many years and how many units were sold during that time. But if we say, let's say the average price is around um, $5, then you're you know, shy of a million dollars, like 750,000, something like that, but still, it's a smaller genre within the shoot 'em up category, bullet hells, and definitely even a smaller genre when you're talking about um, vertical shooters, right? Like games that can support Tate, Tate mode or however you want to look at it. You know, um, you know your orientation. You can adjust to be able to take advantage of a of a screen, whether you've turned it sideways or you've got something like the um, Legends uh, Ultimate Mini or the Legends Pinball, where you can play the full length of the table or the full length of the screen. Those are even a smaller subset. So, you know, looking at what is out there, 
they've definitely got room to grow. And, and here on the channel, we're taking a look at actually games that we really like, that developers that, you know, we want to showcase their games. We're not kind of trying to waste everybody's time with games that just aren't interesting to us as well. Um, but that doesn't mean that those games don't deserve somebody to look at them either, right? It's just right here, we're, we're, we're very specific on what games are working well with some of these machines if you connect them up through the Legends Link app to your Steam machine and, and get a chance to actually take advantage of, you know, a nice control deck and a uh, more kind of home arcade experience. So that's what we're doing here. Wanted to give you a quick look at the uh, Space Moth Lunar Edition just came out in November, something we were happy to take a look at. Again, the code was provided um, complimentary, so free of charge to us. I'm just reviewing it because I really like the game. I like the look of it. I get into these bullet hell shooters. You know, we took a look at Hyper Echelon a little bit ago, different type of game. Um, still kind of a semi bullet hell, but far more upgrading and a different way to play games. Horizontal, you know, gameplay rather than the vertical um, or the Tate mode or whatever, or Tate mode, whatever you want to say, um, type game. So folks, hope you had a great day. Hope you've enjoyed this. Definitely, if you haven't, give us a subscribe, come back, check out other things that we do. Also follow us everywhere. You can find our link tree below that has everything that Fat Old Gamers does and all of our different uh, social medias that we're connected to and every place that we showcase videos of the gameplay and different, different products that we go through. Love to have you join our uh, little community, check out stuff. If you haven't already, give the video a like, definitely get more visible, visibility on the video and um, showcase that game even more for the developer. And then also, if you don't like the game or if you do, leave it in the comments. They're sure that they would love to have that kind of feedback and um, understand better what they can do, right? If there's changes or if there's things that people like, I think it's a good game. I think it's got some uh, potential definitely to check out if you like the um, bullet hell style game. So again, folks, appreciate it. Have a great day. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.